extensively in what we thought what we thought was fair and appropriate to ask for using some of the ARPA funds, um, which is some federal money that we have available to use for different projects that we would like to, to use it for. So we, we voted on that as a committee. We sent it to the full council in the October meeting, and that was passed at full council. So we do have some funds uh, to work on that distribution. Um, and while we're going over the meetings, I kind of update sometimes too. Um, Luke, Charmely, and I did meet with um, uh, the folks at the OHA, Megan Harper, and some members of her team who also work on the PSRB, um, work on issues related to PSRB and accessing services. We're going to work with them to try and come up with a, a plan, hopefully, to increase our ability to distribute the surveys to the to people statewide. Who are who are under or have been under jurisdiction of the PSRB, and then we're continuing to just create those resources, resource outreach lists, so we can get that going. Let's see, and that's what we reported on at the meeting, um, or that's what we worked on at the meeting too, is just making this plan. Can we approve these minutes? What y'all think? Uh, I'll make a motion have... to approve the minutes as written. Oh, I'll second then. Awesome. All right. So um, if you are a member of OCAC, um, you can approve the minutes. You can put a little green check mark in your screen, or you can say, yes, I approve. Uh, yay. Uh, I... Yay. Thanks, Luke. All right. Hi. Any abstentions? Looks like Isaiah um, is abstaining. Rose, I didn't see whether you're abstaining or voting yay or nay. Yay. Oh, thank you. Okay, so then that's it, right? We got it. Okay, cool. Thanks, everybody. Um, okay, so um, I'm noticing that Ashley is not here yet, so we're gonna go ahead and move um, into the presentation from Haven first. And then we will um, just kind of reconfigure as we need to. So Haven is going to present to us about um, uh, the forensic peer um, work that's been happening with New Narrative. Haven, glad to see you. Thank you. Hi, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, um, and Luke, please feel free to, <laughs> to jump in um, when and where you want. Um, is it possible okay. for me to share screen? I've got a few slides in case visuals um, are helpful. Otherwise, I can just talk. I can make you co-host, Haven. Okay. You should be able to. Let me Thank know you. if it works now. Yep, there it goes. All right. Perfect. Now I just need to start at the beginning. Um, yeah, so uh, we are doing some work through uh, People with Lived Experience Advocacy Grants. Um, uh, thank you, Office of Recovery and Resilience. Um, to put together a, a peer-led training for Psychiatric Security Review Board and um, Aid and Assist system uh, providers. And in conversations, we're thinking about kind of the, the, the broad healthcare providers and also hoping that there might actually be some intersection opportunities um, with folks that are working in the uh, legal side um, just to have a, more awareness about some of the system's involvement impacts and especially as it pertains to um, providing informed consent that can support voice and choice as folks are moving through the court process. So our key deliverables are uh, we're putting together a virtual summit on Zoom um, that will also be available by video for providers across the state. The, goal is to make it pretty accessible, particularly for folks that might be in frontier and rural spaces um, where in-person trainings become a little harder to, to access. Um, we're also putting together a like workbook style digital toolkit um, that can be used as reference material. Um, we have a stretch goal of producing some supplemental material 
um, that might help with Oregon State Hospital onboarding and materials, both for folks who are um, coming into the hospital system as uh, in the patient role, as well as for staff who are starting work at the state hospital, um, just to have some, some opportunities to learn more about that system. And then of course, hope. So we have uh, done a lot of recruiting earlier this year. Um, thanks to all of you who supported with getting the word out. Um, we currently have 11 people on um, the, the committee or the board, the advisory board group. Um, six folks uh, have lived or living experience with the Psychiatric Security Review Board. I just can't spell it. Um, and two folks that, that have experience with aid and assist, and then three folks that actually have experience um, navigating both of those systems. And then myself and uh, two of my teammates at New Narrative are um, supporting the project through kind of organizing meetings and pulling materials together and um, just a lot of the, a lot of the logistic send, which will probably grow with time as we get into to marketing the training more um, in the coming months and uh, taking the um, curriculum ideas and, and producing um, PowerPoints and whatnot with them. So our progress so far is uh, recruitment, which is a pretty big deal. We've got a lot of folks um, involved with the project that are currently at the Oregon State Hospital and we're continuing to kind of troubleshoot when unexpected um, challenges get in the way of being able to be present for the meetings. And there's been some, some concerns that have come up around um, the stipends that are available to uh, advisory committee members. I think for the most part, it's been pretty smooth sailing. We're, we're navigating, um, kind of waiting to hear back on um, some barriers that came up on a specific unit. Um, we've got the project charter completed all together. We've got the training outline established at this point. And as we've been um, working together, it's kind of an amazing like brain trust of lived experiences and living experiences. Uh, and that sometimes takes us outside the scope of developing training materials, but ideas and opportunities for like future collaboration or projects. And so we've been um, also keeping track of those and um, a huge shout out to, to Luke because he's been amazing with like thinking about what are some connections that can be made with other work that's happening um, throughout the state by different groups and uh, we'll be shifting into content creation in the next few months. So super broadly, these are the like six kind of core uh, topical areas. And then this actually already is an outline that is many pages. There's pieces within each, but um, the big ideas are like really leaning into voice choice and ethics. Um, and what does that mean, especially in the context of um, involuntary treatment systems? Looks like there's a hand raised. Yeah, I was going to I hear Haven that um, an amazing part of our process has been that as we're like kind of giving contribution to the uh, to the culture of the curriculum, uh, which is going to be developed here pretty soon, the process has been really uh, really remarkable. Because it's been kind of like uh, showing up and being supportive, uh, um, creative problem solving, and um, brainstorming to for people in the system and um, just be together. You know, being with each other. Is really a uh, it's really powerful uh, culture that we have in the council so far. It's uh, innovative work, groundbreaking. Glad to be part of it. Thanks, Luke. This really is um, been a tremendously exciting um, project to be a part of, and. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited to, to continue. And also, especially as y'all are doing the survey, I think I'm really interested in places where we can work together. Um, 
but yeah, for folks on the phone, I can read through the rest of the topics. And then if there's just any kind of questions here to, here to answer um, where we're at, but um, voice choice and ethics, person first, trauma-informed care and informed consent, um, boundaries and relationships. And, and really like that kind of shows up as how do you, how can you build and form a meaningful relationship with um, folks that are providing care in an involuntary setting because that can be really really hard to do um but relationship also goes a long way towards folks feeling respected and, like they're actually given um as much agency as possible in um and really getting information and making meaningful choices um the impacts of of systems involvement and the stigma that comes with that um, some more specific strategies for how, how to how to look at at how are we supporting a whole person. Like each one of us is is so multifaceted faceted as just humans existing in the world and um, being more than a diagnosis or um, a bad day. And then uh, there's this is probably where um, a a huge bulk of what we've come up with so far content wise has come up is transition planning and resource linking. There's a lot of, a lot of challenges with um, folks getting support with like meaningful um, planning in between, uh, in, in between care providers and placements, whether it's Oregon State Hospital back to the community or within the community or at the end of jurisdiction or after restoration, where there's just a bunch of kind of cliffs that currently exist, where all of a sudden a lot of supports drop off. Thank you for coming to my brief TED talk. No, hey, Ben, thank you so much for coming and updating us on the work. We remember, for those of us who were here at the beginning of this project, and you um, came to the to the subcommittee and told us about it. And I know some of us on the subcommittee were helping kind of spread the word yeah. about it to try and get um, peer advisors involved. Um, thank you so much for coming back and letting us know how it's going. Do people have um, any questions or things that they're they're noticing, they're interested in um, related to this project? There's some kudos um, in the chat. Sorry, yeah. go ahead, please, Terry. Um, just wondering about the peer-led training for PSRB systems and how that would go. Do you mean in the sense of like what, our, uh, what our plans are for delivering it? Um, yeah, I'm interested in, because there's a lot of confusion about PSRB and when you get under the board and GEI, and um, so I'd be interested in some peer-led training for something for better understanding, classes in the OSH and so forth. I don't know if that's how what you're thinking of when you say peer-led training for PSRB or not, but... Yeah, so yeah. What, what we're focusing on right now is um, training providers on how they can kind of do, do a better job providing support within the system that really focuses on, that, that honors voice and choice, because um, that can mm -hmm. be not always the case. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things, like if, uh, if there's interest in, um, peer-led trainings that are really for like folks that are involved with with the system. I think that could be a really cool next project. We explored that a little bit at the beginning, but there wasn't um, enough additional funding to kind of create trainings with two different audiences in mind. Um, but I'm, okay. I'm hoping that this- I'm gonna have to cut it short, but that's a great answer. And I, I wanna get involved in a next meeting where I can spend the whole hour with you. I'll look okay. into that. Yeah. But um, I will. Okay. Uh, we do have. Thanks for coming, Terry. Bye-bye. So. Mm -hmm. It does sound like what Terry was, is talking about, though, is like a general need to for like more like kind of education, not only of the, uh, the 
probably the general public about PSRB and um, that whole system, but then also maybe helping people who are involved or adjacent or may become involved, you know, like understand what that process looks like. Um, those are good, good points. Um, uh, JP, you have your hand up. Well, I was going to ask, so you mentioned, um, Haven, reaching out to uh, rural and remote communities. Um, I can help with that. So just tell me what you need. Um, and I, I'm already thinking about folks specifically to reach out to um, in Central and Eastern Oregon. So, yeah, let's let's try to find. And that might be a really good thing to bring to the uh, the uh, Pure Fusion, um, Pure Run Organship leadership organization meeting and talk about that outreach. And, and so yeah, maybe awesome. have, maybe have Ray as a subcommittee um, chair um, and, and talk a little bit about the project to, to that, to that meeting also. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And JP, I'm going to add, I'm going to slip in there too and say, yeah, I would love to connect with you on survey distribution too, because yeah. we have some people that we've been connecting with to try and make sure that we're getting it distributed rurally, um, you know, throughout the state, but um, would love to connect with you on that too and see what ideas you have or, or support you have. But yeah, even um, maybe, yeah, we can make sure you can come to the next Pure fu like you know, come to Pure Fusion too, so that you know yeah. that that outreach can happen there. Yeah. So. Thank you, JP. JD. Yeah, I had a quick clarifying question for you, Haven. When you're talking about provider level, are you talking about peer providers, doctor providers? What what level of provider are you talking about? Uh, we are dreaming big and hoping that we can learn the whole kind of multidisciplinary framework. So, um, yes, peers and also like nursing staff and, and caseworkers and um, prescribers and kind of all, all of the folks, especially the, we're looking to be able to offer continuing education units so that folks who might not be um, as immediately likely to to jump in and sign up for uh training that is a little is um peer-led versus being like very focused on whatever their specialty is will will see value in in spending their time and kind of broadening broadening their thoughts on how they approach care because a, a big um a big pain point that's come up is where just in interactions with with whoever fits the nurse or whoever's kind of on um, in a space that voice and choice, there's not a lot of kind of awareness of those those concepts. Especially, I don't know if I'm answering your question, sorry. I'm just like rambling at this point. No, oh, you, you did. Thank Anybody you. who will listen is the answer. And then I, I had a follow-up question with that. Uh, with this training, especially with there being CEUs, um, is there going to be a cost? Is there a scholarship? What does it look like for people to access this training and knowledge? Free. That's the beauty of the grant funding. So we're putting it all together and there will be a like live Zoom opportunity probably in June. And then we're looking to have the um, videos posted for at least 90 days so that folks can kind of watch at their own time um, and have a, a setup where we can still provide CEUs and then the content will just kind of live on from there. Um, same thing with the digital uh, workbook um, for folks who may not show up for like a full on training, but at least like to collect kind of reference and resource materials that should be a digital PDF that can spread far and wide at no cost. Any other questions that people have about this very, very much needed um, and amazing project? I want to make sure you know that there were a bunch of comments in the chat, Haven. Um, this is so exciting. 
great presentation. Love the slides. I think it's fabulous that this work is being done and grateful for your leadership, Haven. I agree that something is up with end of jurisdiction support and that there are cliffs. I'm not exactly sure where they are, but they are there. Yeah, that's such a great point, Isaiah. And then Rose says, 30 years ago, I worked with a person who was under PSRB, including 25 years as inpatient. There were no options for the person at that time. This is exciting. Go forth. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, no yeah, go ahead, Luke. Thing of, um, is that we're, we're able to inform it with this, uh, with this um, tradition, you know, the, the spirit of the consumer survivor expatriation movement was informed with uh, civil rights, you know, justice work from the very beginning. So it's a, it's, it's a crossover to the protection and advocacy field. Um, and, and it's really, it's really great to have our process informed with the, the need for um, that dimension to stay stay in it. And I was able to actually share some some of the references to some of the um, like documentary films and, and books that were written about the history of the CSX movement and the, following up the last meeting. So I was able to educate some folks about the tradition that we're part of, legacy. <laughs> Thank you, Luke. I'm really glad you're a part of this project too. Um, so if there aren't any other questions for Haven, we will um, move on, but I just wanna give another brief pause to make sure. All right, so Haven, please let us know how we can support um, as a subcommittee, also the full council. Um, uh, we love this project. Obviously, we want to be a support to you, and we, we should keep in touch regarding what we're what we're about to talk to you talk about now, and also around how like we can continue to support um, this project as well. But thank you so much for being here today and and presenting this and updating us on how it's going. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Um, before we move on to the PSRB stuff, really quick. Um, I remember that I wanted to ask the subcommittee if we could move the um, date of this committee meeting for the next two months, because we always run into this at this time of year when it's the fourth Tuesday of the month. What happens is we end up kind of coinciding with like a Thanksgiving holiday and like a winter holiday that some people might celebrate. So I just wanted to to connect and see if that would be okay. We would like to shift it like we usually do, I think, to the third Tuesday. Isra, you have your hand up. You're muted right now. Okay, now it's okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I just want to um, uh, say one thing about this. So if we could make it for always, like keep it in the third week, just for November and December. Yeah. And vote for that because we yeah. don't do this every year. And then I'll, I'll totally. send an email and check with all uh, OCA council member if they agree uh, to make it uh, in the third week. I mean, we can just vote on it as a subcommittee, can't we? Yeah, yeah you yeah. can, for sure. Yeah, let's just do that, okay? okay? So we would like to, there's a motion, I'll make a motion that I'll every second. year the trauma-informed system subcommittee will meet on the third Tuesday in the months of November and December, but we will stay at the fourth Tuesday every other month of the year. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Rose. All in favor? Aye. Wait, wait, wait. What I happened? had a friendly yeah. What? Can a calendar invite be sent out to correct this on our lovely calendars, or is that asking too much? No, no that no. I, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll correct everything and send it again. Okay, Thanks, sorry, Barb. Barb. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine, Barb. <laughs> you're totally fine, Barb. Thank you. Yeah, we'll make sure to get that updated on people's invitations. I think we passed this yes. motion then, correct? Yes. Okay, great work, everybody. Thank you all Thank for being all. Um, so thoughtful. Thanks for bring, for making a, a permanent change, Isra. That's yeah. the way to go. <laughs> All right. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our PSRB project updates. Um, doo -doo -doo. And I um, 
I just want to start off by sharing if it's okay, Isra, I'm just going to share really briefly the survey monkey that you sent out yes. so we can see that um, did, in its did form. Did you receive the update one? Because I, I did. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank yeah. You. So yeah, just everybody, so you can have a, a quick view. We're not going to go through the survey at this point, but you can see Isra is working hard to support this work, putting the survey into a digital format. And this will enable us to be able to reach people digitally um, as well as with paper ones. So we are going to have a paper option as well to send out to places, but here we go. Here's our, here's our survey in electronic form. Yay, and then done. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and stop sharing now. So I just wanted everybody to see that briefly that that's in process. Um, as I said in the minutes, as we were going over the minutes, we did get approval for funding, um, for incentives, for distribution costs. Luke and Sharmali and I are working on coming up with a distribution plan. JD, again, thank you so much for the work you did on the budget. And, and so we were able to present that to the full council in October. Um, Megan is here from uh, Disability Rights Oregon. I just wanna give you a chance to um, like to bring you into this conversation a little bit. Um, Disability Rights Oregon has said that they would be willing to assist with any follow-up with anybody that needs follow-up. Um, and I also just wanna find out if you have any updates for us regarding um, issues related to the PSRB um, and the work that Disability Rights Oregon has been has been doing. Don't mean to put you on the spot, but if you had any, um, just wanted to extend that invitation. Sure, yeah. Um... I think maybe since the last time I updated, um, Disability Rights Oregon has filed a lawsuit for uh, administrative review of um, a new rule that, that the PSRB had made regarding um, the nexus of a person's so-called dangerousness and their so-called qualifying mental disorder. Um, <clears throat> So that's that's kind of in process. I don't have a lot of updates or really any just kind of about that specifically, but I do know that um, the PSRB is continuing to go through their uh, regular rulemaking process on this. Um, DRO cannot attend those meetings because of the lawsuit, but I would encourage um, when there, whenever there's public, um, whenever there are public meetings or they have requests for input you know, for everybody to to give their their input on that. Um, as far as the survey goes, um, you know, we're pretty. I'm I'm pretty just kind of postured to help. However, you all think is best. Um, I could take a day and go to Oregon State Hospital to meet with folks um, confidentially. Um, also, just to put it out there. I'm the only staff person who is actually located in central Washington. So if there are individuals, say maybe living, you know, out here that, you know, want to connect, I can also probably uh, help out with that too, to some extent. Awesome. Thank you so much, Megan. I had a question that again, I'm not sure, I don't, I'm not meaning to put you on the spot, but just since you're here, mm -hmm. um, one question that I had was our curiosity whether Disability Rights Oregon would be able to and would be open to um, putting a link to the electronic version of this survey on your website or announcing it in a newsletter or something like oh, that. Oh, sure. So, yeah. I can, I can run that by our communications people and um, Melissa and see what she says, but I don't see any issue okay. with that. Thank you so much for checking yeah. in about that, because I think that could be a really helpful way. That's one of the ways that we're looking at trying to get the word out. Is, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Megan. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in terms of the Nexus group, um, I am invited to attend that group. And um, I really feel like I'm not the best voice in some ways, like to be there. Um, but I really, so I just really want people to like, 
get in touch with me if you have specific issues that you want to make sure are heard, because that isn't a public group. I've advocated for a couple other people to be involved in that group, um, and they are going to be involved in that group, but just wanted to put out a general call. If you're interested and have some information, some expertise, some experience around um, dangerousness and how that is defined, um, uh, and want to bring that perspective to the group, I'm happy to like bring written statements, bring questions, et cetera, so that I can be a voice for the whole committee um, and members of the public around this issue, because it is a really important issue um, that leads to what essentially I think of as preemptive incarceration. Um, this whole mm -hmm. definition of mm -hmm. dangerousness is like, well, you know, maybe, hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's keep you, let's keep you incarcerated just because maybe, um, so yeah, let me know if I can help with that or if I can be a voice for that. Um, next, so we're working on the distribution could always, always want help, insight, information from others on the committee. If you're like, Hey, let's make sure to get this person, hey, I know this person, right? We need a collective effort in order to get the survey out to as many places as possible. Um, you're welcome to just reach out to me or speak up now um, if there are some suggestions that you have. Uh, Rhea, if Hello. you allow me, um, maybe we can also uh, upload the link for the survey to the OCAC web page. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. I do want to work with you a little bit on the survey before it's made public. So yes, yes, because I have a few questions uh, about yes. the design and the the category because I I chose community or volunteer feedback, but I'm not sure this is the the right category we need to send to. So. We need to work together about that. Yeah, I think maybe you and I should just like try and have a little meeting. So okay. let's, okay. Thank yeah, you, yeah. Isra. I'll, I'll send you a few times and days and let's meet. That sounds great. Thank you so much. You. Um, I saw, I heard somebody that's on the phone um, with a number ending 802 start to speak. I want to go back to that person. Oh, it's me. It's Marquita. Hi, everybody. Marquita. Sorry, Welcome. Thank you. Hey, um, I'm so excited about this. I came in at the end of you discussing about the group. Um, and it sounded like something that very interesting, but I caught the middle of it for the end of it. He able to hear Marquita very well. Are other people? Do you guys hear me better now? Go, go ahead and let's see. Yes. Can you hear me? Thank yes. yes. Hear me? They're all okay. nodding. Um, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I came in in the middle towards the end for uh, you were discussing about the group that it's not like a a public thing and we can write down questions if we have it. Uh, what group is this? I, I caught the end of it. it. Sounded interesting. Oh, it's it's called nexus, and nexus is a definition of dangerousness for people who are under the jurisdiction of the PSRB. Um, it's used to define like if they're under the Megan, can you help or Luke, can you help me with the legal speak? <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's basically like um take it, it's they kind of take out the the because essentially like when they're when the PSRB is deciding if someone still belongs under their jurisdiction um the rule says that um the person has to have a uh, they have to be dangerous because of their qualifying mental disorder the the because that's what is called a nexus it can, it's a connection so they kind of uh from our perspective with a new rule they they took out that that causal connection and they just say um if you may do somebody some harm at some point in the future <laughs> is kind of how we read it, um, that you can still be under the jurisdiction of the PSRB. So um, yeah, that's what this is about. Yeah, so Marquita, thank you so much, Megan. So yeah, there's a meeting that is 
it, that is an invitation meeting and there's a lot of different community members and I know Charm, you're going to be there, right? Yes. You're in, yeah. Um, and Luke, I believe you're involved in that. Yeah. When it reconvenes. Yeah. I, I think I just, be. I think I just saw an email in oh, my inbox this morning for October 30th. So, oh, okay. I see. I think I just saw that this morning. So I haven't had a chance to sit and really look at it, but I was like, oh, so, um, so yeah, I think it's coming up again. Um, yeah. So my call was just like, if other people have stuff that they want to bring to me that I can bring to that group, like, please get in touch with me and let me know. Okay. So, um, one of the things that I really need help with and that I can't really wrap my mind around, and I'm really going to call on members of the committee to help with, um, because I do feel like this is this project that the trauma informed system subcommittee has taken on and has been working on for over a year now is really big. It's a really big project that we've been doing, and it's different than a lot of OCAC work um, previously and in a number of different ways. And, um, and it's just taking a lot of energy and a lot of organ organizing around it. And the piece that I need help with is just, is somebody to think about we're incentivizing participation in the survey. How do people, who holds the gift cards and how do those gift cards get to the people that participate in the survey? Because if we want to make it, there are a couple of factors here. We want to make it anonymous or as anonymous as possible for people to participate. But then we're going to have to get a gift card to people. So I just need assistance with that. Yes, JD. One idea is if people are participating in the electronic version, the Survey Monkey, you can ask at the end, would you like a gift card for your participation? And then if yes, provide an email address. That way people have a choice uh, on saying what email address is attached to the survey, knowing that it will let us know who said what answers only by your email. Does that make sense? You're muted, Rhea. Muted, Rhea. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> Thanks, Isaiah. <laughs> yes, thank you, JD, for that suggestion. I wrote it down. We can look into doing it that way for the electronic version. We do need to figure out how we could do it for people who are participating in paper. And one, I don't know, like one idea is like we're going to be calling on some community organizations to help with us. Like the one that I work for has a lot of PSRB housing, for example. Like we could try to designate somebody within each organization as kind of a point person would that, you know, like, and maybe a peer support person specifically um, to try and help with that distribution process. I don't know. Bart. I'm thinking about a couple of things. One is whether you guys are thinking about reaching out like to each county individually and trying to have yeah. find a point person in that way. Um, yeah, I can just, if I can just say uh, around that, around that topic, Barb, we are looking into trying to reach out to specifically the county monitors just for distribution of the survey. I don't know when it gets into distributing the gift cards, if that would be a viable option or not. Is there somebody else with counties, though, that you were thinking of, Barb? I'm not sure what a county monitor is. They're the people in each county who know who's who within the PSRB population within that county. Okay. So it's a specific, all right. All right. So it specifically hits the, um, so I can't believe that survey monkey doesn't have an option to close out the survey anonymously and then ask whether you want to be it to be incentivized. So I, and, and then asks for your information so that there's a separation. Because what JD's saying just sounds even 
it doesn't sound complicated to me, but it sounds like if I got there, I would wish I had done that or thought of doing that before kind of thing. It's clever. Um, but I don't always think of that at the end of something. Um, there's the, there's another survey going on right now that I'm aware of that the county's doing. And they basically have made it so that you have to go to where they are to come pick up your gift card. And there's one point person that's giving them all out. And she's not real happy about that. Um, and I, you know, I don't think that that's the best way to do it. But I know that it, you might have to do it in some kind of way like that where somebody comes, I, I can't figure out how to do it anonymously in that way. I'll think about it more. Ricky, and also transportation, I know, can be an issue. And even the ability to move freely within the community can be right. an issue. That, that's why um, I started trailing off. <laughs> yeah. And I don't even know whether it would be secure, a, a good, I'll just say a good idea <laughs> for us to like have physical gift cards that we're mailing to people. Like that also doesn't feel like it's an option because the gift card itself is like cash basically. So I don't think that even if we had an address and then we're mailing it, like that doesn't, that also doesn't feel viable. Isaiah. Yeah, I was thinking um, uh, kind of your idea with the peer support. If peer support were to like come by, like deliver, like on units or like to uh, storage and just they could be informed like, hey, you have a gift card in your storage now. Um, just kind of an in-person to kind of just get it to where it needs to go versus mailing it in the mail or something like that. And they could just like, get it passed along to them that they have a gift card and storage for whatever reason. I don't know. Um, yeah. But yeah. Thank you, off. Isaiah. Um, so Walida, and then we'll have to pause for public comments here in just another minute. So yes, Walida. And thank you, Isaiah, for that. Charm just put it in the in the uh, message thing too. What I was saying, I was thinking about, you can do the virtual cards. Sean, yeah. Yeah. So that was it. Yeah. And JD mentioned that as well. Like in the, at the end of the lecture, if people are doing the survey electronically, this does not feel like a huge issue to me issue. because I do think that then there's more of a chance that they're going to have an email address some way that they could then have a virtual gift card email to. The issue is really the physical paper issues or, uh, surveys so um okay i couldn't figure out to raise my hand on the phone uh but i was an idea came to me about having maybe a receipt attached to the paper form of the survey uh -huh. where once they complete it they have a receipt it has a number on it now figuring out the other part of <laughs> where they take the receipt to get their gift card i didn't go that far but i'm thinking yeah. the receipt could be a way to keep it confidential. Um, and then we have a number to each paper survey that matches the receipt. Yeah. So it yeah. can be confirmed that they did take the survey. And I was thinking if ARPA fund is helping pay for the, um, for the survey to be dis uh, distributed, then maybe folks on could be the point person for them to turn in their receipts to get their gift card. Just a thought. Thank you, Marquita. Thanks for everybody's suggestions. We're gonna pause now for public comment. So this is a time for members of our public, if there's anything related to anything at all, but also trauma-informed systems that you wanna comment on, this is your time. I don't hear anything. 
from our beloved public. Thank you so much for being here, though. Oh, Barb, you came off mute for a sec. You know, because I, I was going to say something and then I wasn't going to say something and then I was going to say something. Um, couple thoughts, and I don't know whether our esteemed Laura Rose, if she was here, if she would hawk something like this, but I don't have a problem doing it, puregalaxy.com. And I would say that I would really hope with the first pro project that Haven described that you guys would reach out to try to, if you want, if you want to advertise. And since it's online and free, it totally fits in with puregalaxy.com. And if you don't know how to get there, we can all tell you how to get there. Um, the electronic gift cards. Yeah, that was my idea that I had told the other people. Um, and I just want to say good meeting. Thank you, guys. And one more. Oh, JP jumped off, right? One more month without anybody at the <laughs> Behavioral Health Crisis Systems Advisory Council meeting. But it was a painful one. So that's okay. Painful as in it, it was very clinical and very boring. That's it. Thank you, Barb. Thank you so much for being here. Um, thanks for everybody's ideas today around the distribution of the survey itself and the gift cards. We're going to keep working on this. I'm hoping that by our meeting in November, maybe we will have started distributing it. I don't know if you're interested in helping put your hands to work in making this work please reach out to me so I can include you and get your energy behind this project outside of this meeting. That would be really great. So there, there are going to be things that we need other people to help with. So yeah, let me know if you have some time and to spare to help with that. Okay. Looking beautiful. You're going to have a good time. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to crash. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Um, Thank you, looking Ryan. forward to seeing you all soon. Glad you were here. Thank, thank you, everyone. And thanks Bye. again, Haven, for doing your presentation. Yes, thank you, Haven. You, Haven, yeah. Thanks, Walita. Thanks, Walita. Thank thanks, Isra. Thank you. Hi, you guys. Can't wait to see you guys in person soon. Thanks. Good to see folks I haven't seen in a minute. Bye. Bye. Bye, y'all. Uh...